today we have no items underneath the agenda category, but we do have uh, items under the non-agenda category. And so we'll start with the first one. Um, this is outreach. So number one is read reconfiguration, discuss, and, and outreach. So we're trying to figure out how to reach out to the public about our future um, conversation about uh, re grade reconfiguration. Yes, thanks, Ms. Barker. Um, the one thing I think it's important to bring some clarity to is we could have an agenda item deliberation. And let me try to explain that, even though I have it marked as none. On the motion tonight for the board's uh, consideration is a motion for us to partner with an outside agency to conduct this work for us. We previously talked about it. Uh, we went out and solicited some proposals and some requests. So that will be on the agenda tonight for the board to decide. With that said, that would take care of how they would go about doing the discussion and outreach. The avenues that we have listed, A through D, are just our ideas. Uh, but I would say, depending on the board's action tonight with the outside agency, that would be up to them. Obviously, you know, requiring approval from the board as we go through this step by step. But there could be, um, you know, I, I would recommend we allow them to take control of the process. So again, let me re-explain what's happening here. Tonight, you're going to be faced with a motion for an outside company to come in and they presented a proposal to us, which we provided to the board that looks at what their options are as far as leading this community outreach um, facet of great uh, reconfiguration. The costs are about $6,000, I believe, for this company. And the board will have to decide if they want to go through with that proposal. If they want to go through with that proposal, I think all the items that we have listed A through D would hopefully be a part of in some way, shape or form. The work they're going to do. So I'll defer to you, Ms. Barker. Um, these are avenues that we thought about we'd reach and, and, and try to connect with our stakeholders. But I think, again, if we hire this company, this is exactly what we're hiring them to do. And I would allow them to do that work. Again, you'll have input and say as a board about what other avenues they want to reach. But, you know, I, I this was I created this agenda before that uh, um, we had information from an outside company. So I'll, I'll turn it over to the committee for discussion. Mike, did uh, we get that proposal in our emails yet? I, I believe it was sent to you. If not, I can make sure it, it'll be provided. Yes, we report. got it last week. That's what I thought. Yep. I'll have to check that through. Um, let's, you know, who who knows what the board will decide tonight. You know, in hindsight, maybe it would have been better afterwards. But um, let's. Uh, go through and brainstorm about all the potential uh, stakeholders um, so that we just have a list and then you know we also if if the board decides to hire this company tonight um, you know we'll have a list of who you know an outside company might not necessarily know um, what stakeholders we have in our county if they're not from here um, yes Cinda so I'm wondering, I haven't, I haven't looked at the information for tonight, um, the agendas and so forth. Is that proposal from the facilitator company, has that been made available to the public? No, Ms. Sinda, it's a board agenda item. So I only make that available to the board. Once the board approves it, then it becomes a public document. Um, so I did not make it available to anyone else other than the board until the board takes action. The reason behind that is I don't know what the direction the board's going to take and I don't want to spread misinformation. So at this point, only the uh, board has that, Lucinda. Okay, thanks. Yes, ma'am. To answer your question, uh, Ms. Barker, I think you got a couple different stakeholder groups. Uh, one, uh, families, right? I think that's one important group that we have to connect with. Two, um, I think you also have to connect with the people who are on um, no families or limited budget and who are maybe retired because we I know the board's always cognizant of those difficulties those peoples may have. I, I think you also have another one with our businesses, right? Uh, business and community input would be important to me. Um, but those are three that step out. They're all taxpayers, right? So it's easy to say taxpayers, but in those buckets, I think there's three that stand out. Uh, those with kids, um, those without kids, you know, our families and then businesses. But anyone else did you want me to think about that you that may come up in your mind? And I think Miss Miss um, Blank has her hand up as well. You might want to put the borough as well on there. Um, 
you know, at least have some of the votes from the, you know, they're they're really interested in the community schools and stuff. So to include them as stakeholder would be kind of important, I think. I, I agree. I think it's important to talk to them and reach out to them, make sure they understand what's going on and be neighborly. And the, the, I think that's absolutely important. Ms. Cunningham? I agree with that. I think it's really important because um, they, if this is moving in the direction that some people perceive it to be moving, um, it would be good to have the borough on board uh, because it will impact greatly in that area. Um, going back to what you said about stakeholders, um, you'd have the retirement community, which is large. Uh, don't forget your teachers. The teachers have to have some sort of um, uh, say or some sort of participation in this process also, because they're the ones who will be delivering the change to, to, the, to the children. So I really think that you need to also include them. Yeah, I agree. I definitely will add the teachers. Um, so everyone knows, I, I believe the president, Mr. Schroth, did share his white paper with uh, Mr. Ben Ford. Uh, so he's a well aware of the intentions that the district is, th as far as the discussions, uh, well, well aware of our intentions there. So he was made aware. I think that was important for us to reach out neighborly to them. And um, so I want to put everyone at ease there. Mr. President, I see your hand is up, sir. Yeah, Mike, let me, um, let me kind of um, uh, chime in there. Um, I arranged a meeting with uh, Ben Ford uh, Peter Broad and Michael Foot, um, and this occurred, I believe, the Thursday before we met last week, um, so that they knew in advance that we were going to start having this discussion, um, and that they didn't um, hear about it through, you know, a back door or from the, uh, you know, from the news media. Um, so that we didn't catch them off off guard. Uh, ben actually requested a copy of the white paper, which I told him was available once it became public um, at the Buildings and Grounds Committee meeting last Monday night. I subsequently sent both him, uh, Peter Broad and um, Michael Foote, a copy of that paper. Um, I got an email back from, from um, from Ben basically thanking thanking me and now he kind of better understood our my thought process in in putting that white paper together. Um, we that conversation, um, the, the gist of it was um, that that you know the the uh, borough council is uh, you know concerned about any uh, time an anchor is changed in a community. And um, um, while they understand that we have certain responsibilities, um, they simply were asking us to make sure that um, if it came down to the closing of a building, that that building wasn't just abandoned and that if we could find another use for that building, um, um, you know, they certainly encouraged us to do so. The sense that I got was that, um, they are, were very appreciative of the fact that we reached out to them. I think they were also very appreciative of the fact that we are trying to do this the right way. And, um, but I also sense that there was a certain amount of reality as long as we can do whatever we can to protect those community anchors and assets. So that was the gist of that conversation. So, Ms. Barker, I did add letter D. Um, again, this would have to wait and see what happens with the outside company. But one thing I thought we could do is work with the Applied Research Lab at IEP to create the community survey. I think the best thing we can do is allow outside agencies to handle this conversation and collect the data for us. The board has the ultimate say, both long term and short term. But we thought this may be another way to collect some unbiased data um, from the community as well. Again, we're not sure if we can get it done. I'm not sure if the, this outside agency want to go to this group, but I think, you know, given kids, uh, teachers, and uh, all these stakeholders, different multiple voices would be important as well. 
That's just an idea. Ms. Leeper, I see your hands up. Yes, yeah, so I think that um, the outside agency is a great idea. I think removing um, emotions um, and making it more objective um, and, and um, hiring somebody who does this. It sounds like they have an extensive history of doing things like this. So I feel like this is not um, anybody on the board's expertise or an administration. So I feel like that it would best serve us to do that. Um, you mentioned the applied, applied research lab and um, we used them in the past, I think maybe during the um, mega uh, school. No, not the mega school, but the online, the summit learning platform um, uh, debate, community uproar, whatever you want to call that. Um, and the table, like everything was handed over to them and they were directed to develop a survey. I found that some of the questions I thought should have been asked were not in that survey. And so I think if we go with them, I know that they have guidelines that they like to follow, but I also think it's important that we look at that survey to make sure it's meeting our needs. Um, I felt like that one did not meet all of our needs. Um, so I just, I support doing that. I just would like to see the survey before it is finalized. I think Ms. Leaper is right. No matter who's creating it, we want to make sure that it reflects the questions we want it to reflect and make sure it gains and gathers a whole bunch of information uh, that's reflective of the community. So yeah, this is one, I'll, I'll defer to the board, but this is one where we will go slow to go fast. This is where we take our time to make sure we collect all input and make sure the survey is uh, properly crafted. So I, I agree. And I only picked IUP Applied Research Lab because I think um, it should not be the school district issuing this. It should be an outside entity. And maybe that company, to your point, Ms. Lieber, will have someone who does it and have that embedded. So yeah, I wouldn't get too excited about it. I think that just, there has to be, I think, a way to get people a voice who don't want to be heard as far as being vocal. They may want to do something electronically and I think it's important to capture that. And um, I'm yeah. not sure like on that as well, as far as stakeholders, I don't know if we could include our students as stakeholders. I don't know how much information elementary students um, could could participate or could offer, um, but I think that sometimes we do underestimate the voices of our students in helping us um, guide things that we do. So they are younger, but it may be some of the older ones, the fourth and fifth graders may definitely have good points to offer. So just a consideration as well. Yeah, I agree. And if you're okay with Ms. Leeper, what I'll do is I'll just put that in the parking lot item and whoever creates the survey will ask them their input and defer to them if that's okay with you, Ms. Leeper. Okay. Ms. Cunningham, I see your hands up. I am <clears throat> I'm glad that you want it to be reflective of the community. That's my concern. When we use the term we, we mean the collective we, the whole community plus the board, plus the administration is the way I'm interpreting this. I, what I'm concerned about with an outside agency, and this is just a concern, and you have addressed it, Mike, in that you want it to be reflective of the community as a whole and all the stakeholders. I agree with that. I don't want it to become restrictive to the point where it can look like steamrolling. And I think that that is your intent, Mike, not to let that happen. And so I would say that is a good thing. It must be reflective. And when we use the term we, it must be we the community. Um, I know the board is directing this. I know the board is moving this forward, but uh, that's, my, that's my concern. Uh, Tamara mentioned the uh, community upheaval or um, we don't want to do that. I mean, it's been a very hard year for the parents, for the taxpayers understanding about virtual learning for the teacher. We want to be able to do this in as best the manner as we can with reflecting everyone's concerns. So I appreciate what you said, Mike, very much. Yes, ma'am, Josie. And also, it's also about, I think we have to remove ourselves from the equation too. Like, I don't want to, them there be uh, implicit bias towards me or, you know, I'm swaying it. And I know it may sound selfish, but I think it's the best thing to do to protect the district, protect me. Uh, and let the community speak their mind. And that way I'm removing myself from the situation because I have nine board members, right? And I have to follow all nine and collectively I have to make a decision, but this is part of the process. And I think it's just wise, selfishly, I think it's wise to remove myself from that process, if that makes sense. 
Mr. President, I see your hands up, sir. Uh, yeah, Mike. Um, you know, I the um, one caveat to, though that I would have about the survey, um, and this is why I think it's important that we either have somebody like IUP put this thing together, or possibly this consultant if they are elect, you know, selected this evening, is to ensure that there isn't a built-in bias in the participants of the survey. Um, you know, it, there's certainly a very, very strong, passionate group um, um, within the greater community um, that, that have um, feelings one way or the other. What I need to be sure that when we send this survey out, that the respondents that come back are not skewed to one side or the other simply because no the other side does not participate that's that's the concern that i have is that there is equal participation to actually be a representative sample of the um um, um of the of the community yeah i agree i think what your your point is we want to make sure it's a carefully and accurately worded survey and who best to do it but then an outside company like I could do a Google Forms, but that's not, my research is not my forte, and crafting surveys to that extent to you know try to limit bias is not my forte, and that's why I think again, no matter who does it, as long as it's someone who has expertise in crafting this, is best suited because you know this is um yeah it, it's it's a it's a delicate but, subject, and I just I think it's important to remove ourselves from it. No, no, as far as the crafting of the survey, absolutely, Mike. There also has to be a way to to kind of look at the sampling. Uh, the actual sampling uh, scheme of this um, be because we need to be sure that the sample is representative of the community and not just one group in the community. Yeah, I agree. And I think they'll ask those type of questions, meaning, you know, they'll get to try to pin down, I'm assuming, I would assume, narrow down the different type of stakeholders so we can have input from the different type of stakeholders. Not we'll get the big picture, entire community, but hopefully they'll be able to, you know, attribute to other subgroups as well. So we know taxpayers, non-taxpayers, um, retirement community, teacher community. I, I'm assuming they'll be able to drill down there and, and get some real information so we can look at each different stakeholder group and see where their thoughts are as well. So I think, you know, well, that company or whoever we hire to do that, will be able to do such a thing. I'm, I'm hopeful. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, Ms. Parker, if it's okay with you, Ms. Cinda has her hand up. Are you okay if I call on her as well? Oh, yeah, yeah. Ms. Cinda? So I totally agree with everything that Josie and Walter said. Um, to Josie's point, we need to make sure that this is inclusive. Um, there was talk about, you know, making sure that the conversation didn't go down this rabbit hole or the other rabbit hole. I want to be very certain that any out outside company is helping us with this, not furthering the agenda of one group or another in the situation. That goes for the survey also. Um, as to, for Walter's point about wanting to make sure that the, the uh, survey shows a good cross section of all of the different groups and the different um, opinions of the groups, that's what I think is really important about this meeting because we need to get, we need to reach out to the community and make sure that everybody participates in this decision. Reconfiguration is always a difficult thing. People are still complaining about the last reconfiguration and the way it was done. And I wanna make sure that we don't do this one in any way that a large segment of the community still feels disenfranchised, feels left out, feels like they were steamrolled. So we need to really concentrate on that as much as possible. Yeah, I think Ms. Cindy bring up all the points. The only thing I would add to it, again, my advice to the board be go slow to go fast. Take your time to look at the data, take your time to look at results and make sure the decision you're making you feel is reflective of what you think is best. Because um, they're, you know, even when we do the surveys, I think we'd be naive to say 100% will be for or against. There's always going to be a mixture, and you're going to decide what you think is best. And um, and I know you'll take your time to make a good decision on that. So I think Cindy's points are well taken. Ms. Barker, I'll turn it over to you. There seems to be no other questions from the um, the committee members or the audience on the call. I'll defer to you and see how you want to proceed with item number one. Oh, well, I had some comments, and one thing 
uh, with the surveys um, that I think we should really keep in mind is people's wants might not be reflective of what we can afford. So having a price tag um, with different options might change people's opinion on how things should be. Uh, so, so it's important, you know, sometimes people see fancy things and they get all excited and then you realize you, you actually can't afford it. Um, and the other concern I have with the whole, the whole schedule is that essentially within one month, we will be making a decision um, on which option. So by August board meeting, you know, we'll be, you know, selecting our, our option. And that's a very short time to get the community on board. Um, it's, it's important that the community is on board with our plans if we are to be successful. Uh, if you don't have the community buy-in, it doesn't matter what we do, it won't be successful. And you will continue to go down essentially the rabbit holes for the next, you know, the next election cycle and the next election cycle. And as a previous board member said, 30 years of, of doing this. Um, so those, those are kind of my concerns. And then I do have some comments about the stakeholders, but I see Tom raised his hand. So um, I'd like him to uh, weigh in if he has a comment about it. Yeah, Barb. Um... Uh, first off, um, the uh, people we're talking to um, have done work for the library and the, and the uh, hospital, um, and so they're somewhat familiar with the community, which is which is, was wonderful to hear. So I'd like to I'd like to mention that. Um, the other thing is is that although I'd like to take um, all the time we need, um, we also have to acknowledge that if we don't push this process. Um, um, perhaps a bit quicker than we'd like to, um, we will be in the same configuration going into fall of uh, 2022 for another year um, with kids in, in the shoe, shoehorned into buildings and, and stuff. So if there's, so if it's possible to run this qu as quick as we're intending to, um, um, we have to balance it with, with that, with that stark reality. Um, we have kids, um, not in Eisenhower, we have them stuffed into the junior high. We have, you know, it's just, it's if we, if it's possible to get this done in, in the time frame we've set out, then 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 wonderful. Um, this is not something that we can take uh, two years unless you're very comfortable with what the concurrent configuration is. So that's my point. Thank you. Yeah, Miss Barkin, I'll just say Mr. Harley brings up a lot of points. There's, I, we need direction on what you want us to do, and then we're able to go out and do that and. Hopefully through these discussions, we'll get to the heart of it. And I don't know if it'll be in August, September. I don't know when that would occur, but um, we do need to make some decisions. And I think you, you as a board need to vote when you feel comfortable and, and express yourself like you always do, all of you, uh, about what you think is best or not best. And it's just the difficult decisions doesn't preclude us from having them. And I think what I need to do is have direction about what you want us to do as a district. And I think hopefully this process will help us get to the heart of that. And whatever you, de you decide as a board, We'll run, we'll run that play because um, that's how this works. We work for you and we want to make sure that you know, we get we get it done the way you want it to be done. And again, I applaud you for at least trying to go out and get input from the public and try to gather input. Uh, I just have to caution you that you may see competing interests, right? Uh, again, we're naive if you see 100% one way or other. I, I think you're going to have some tough decisions to make and let's go slow, go fast. And when you're comfortable, you know, I'll follow your lead. I'm, never, I'm not going to push you one way or another. I just to Mr. Harley's point, every decision we make or don't make has a consequence and meaning right. things, other things could be delayed. You have to be aware of that and be comfortable with that. And that's not being mean or curt when I say that. I'm just being practical to you. That's all. Um, Ms. Barker, Josie, anything else? Number one? I'm sorry, I interrupted someone. I apologize. Yeah, Josie, is your hand up? Yes, it is. Um, I'm not wanting to be the devil's advocate, but always falling into that role lately. Uh, I need to say that I think Barb makes a very good point. If we are going to have a decision by August 1st, this is 4th of July week. This is the week people are having picnics, masks come off, reunions are taking place. People will be distracted. People will um, not have this as a priority. Families are taking vacations. Um, 
I, I like the point that you made, Mike, is that we don't want to rush. We want to go slow to go fast. I think that's the term that you always use. Um, I'm concerned about that August first meeting in August deadline. Um, I think that that might be too soon. This board also has a uh, contract coming up with the teachers union. This board has other decisions that have to be made that are going to be costly to the district. I also think that Mr. Harley, if I remember correctly, and I see Principal Eisenman's on this call, she said that there was plenty of room in the junior high at this time to take on what we needed to do in, the, in this emergency. So I understand that Eisenhower has opened a door for us to look at configuration within the district. That is understood. What I am concerned about is the need to rush. And I don't think that's a good thing. And I don't think it will do well with the public. I, I don't. As I said, we are recovering from a pandemic. We are recovering from virtual learning. We have no idea what the Delta variant is going to bring to this district in the fall or to this community. I th I'm, I'm normally not a cautionary person, but I would urge caution. And I think that, uh, Mike, your, your comments are well taken. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. And hopefully, I, I think the process will tell us, um, tell us how fast or how slow the board wants to go. I just, I would say, if you ask my opinion, I think it's best to hire an outside company. I think that's how the process starts. And wherever it goes from there, that you as a board will have to determine the next steps. But I think having someone facilitate this discussion, besides me, it is important. Um, I think it'll help us. I think it'll help you. And I don't, maybe you will be good by August. Maybe you won't. You'll have to decide that. I, I can't, we won't know that. And I'll, I mean, it's to be curt, we won't know that until we at least start the conversation. It seems like you want to have a conversation and, and it's best if it's someone else leading that for us, is my opinion. Does that, does that make sense, Ms. Ms. Uh, Barker? Um, yes, and uh, I don't see any more hands. Um, my original um, comment or, or to start out this uh, non-agenda item was to list stakeholders to make sure that administration knew of all stakeholders um, just in case uh, the potential company that we might hire um, facilitator doesn't know. And, and I give the example of the previous architects never knew there was a gas well, a gas well line uh, next to Ben Franklin. So it's important that, that we all know, and there's um, many minds on this uh, conversation that might be able to help. But one stakeholder, so we have the methods listed, some of the methods that we do, website, social media, Radio interviews, the Gazette, um, and potentially a survey, but um, some of the other groups uh, is the county commissioners because the county does have a comprehensive plan. Uh, and we listed the borough. Um, and I don't know about White Township, um, you know, if the schools would affect the, the White Township, the Armstrong Township, and am I missing a township? I think I got them all. Uh, those elected officials, you know, if, if they have comprehensive plans, and I believe there's also a planning commission, a county planning commission, um, which could it be a, a, like an advisory, but I'm not sure if it was listed that they would give a advisory comment if, if something was happening with the schools, and, and maybe Josie can, can weigh in on that. I, I think she might be on that board um if i have the name correct um are you referring to the indiana county planning commission i i would assume is yeah. that correct uh yeah i am on that board and we are very soon going to put out our seldo plan which is um uh about the growth within the county and how we plan for that growth so to to your point it would be a good thing if that was shared with the county commissioners and the planning commission, because it does fall under the growth for the county. It would be something that would be substantial to the growth of the county. So I think that that would be something, another stakeholder that you could add, yes. 
Yeah, and just Miss Barker to remind everyone, I know this is obvious. I don't want to sound curt when I say this either. Our board meetings are public to anyone. So regardless of the stakeholders, anyone who wants to come can come. And as we have demonstrated, I think over the last several years, um, we value those voices, right? So I, I don't care what you decide. I guess my point is people have multiple ways to um, to contribute, multiple ways to connect, and we want to continue that. And I think your point's well taken. Ms. Barker, I'm not sure, but I think, Mr. yeah, I think Mr. President has his hand up. Ms. Barker. Yeah, uh, Barb, uh, this is this is Walter. Um, the um, the county planning group um, may have certain recommendations, and as as you pointed out, is a uh, a stakeholder essentially um, here to um, you know the bigger county level. Um, however, when it comes right down to it. Um, the, um, the authority that they have really, um, they don't have any authority over the school district and we can operate independently, um, of their recommendations. So while I certainly want the county to weigh in on this through their planning commission, I also want to make it very clear that, um, that's not necessarily a, um, uh, an absolute that has to be followed followed to that letter. Yeah, Mr. Schroth, I think if I hear you correctly, what you're saying is they're just as valuable as any other stakeholder. We want to give them a chance to give input, but they don't dictate what the district does. The district does that, it makes the decision. The nine of you, correct? That is that is correct. We, we certainly want their and value their input, um, and but it is not the final, you know, not the final determining factor. Agreed. And they should have input. I think you, the board values input. We want to continue it. Uh, Ms. Ms. Cunningham, I think your hand's up. You're, you're muted, Ms. Cunningham. I'm sorry. Um, that's true. The planning commission uh, can uh, look at what's being done and make a comment. You're right. You have the autonomy. However, it's always good to be inclusive as you've made that point, Mike. That's that's a good thing. Thank you. Yeah, and I don't want to speak the board, but I think what the board's trying to do is be neighborly and do things the right way and they want input. So I think that's something that's important to them. Again, albeit they understand that this final decision making is theirs, but they want to get a wide variety of input. And I think this this uh, company is a step in the right direction, but again, I'll defer to the board's judgment tonight on that. Okay, anybody else have their hands up? Uh, I don't see any. Um, if anybody has any future ideas or comments on ways to reach out or stakeholders to reach to that, uh, that you know, they feel would have an important, um, would bring would bring value, but would also, you know, any opinion is important to hear. So if, if anybody comes up with anything, feel free to email the board um, or, you know, come to a, a meeting and, and make a, we have lots of committee meetings um, and board meetings. Uh, so there's further opportunities. Uh, so with nothing else said, we will move on to number two, the website draft template, which I just clicked on the agenda to look at it and uh, fancy fancy. Um, Mike, would you like to explain? Yes, ma'am. Um, we are in the planning stages of mitigating, the, uh, migrating the content over to the new site uh, through our provider, Edleo. We, it's imperative to me that we keep a fresh, crisp site. And for no additional charge, they're able to revamp our site. So I included, which I'll show you in a minute, um, a draft status, of, a static look of what it looks like. Um, no design changes can be made at this time without new cost. But I think we, we internally, as administration, spent some good time really working on us developing something we thought was robust and user friendly. The expected rollout date will be uh, the beginning of August. I'll still be the lead on this this project. Uh, you may be wondering, hey, why are you doing another? Um, website and only after a couple of years. I just think it's important to learn from our current website and always improve it and kind of keep the site uh, and the brand refreshed. So I think the site does a nice job of that. Randy, if you can click on the link 
Um, we can show people what the draft looks like. Again, it's static, meaning you can't engage with it. It's just a PDF. Um, but I think it's a step in the right direction. And I think once it's done, you'll be uh, and hopefully impressed with the quality of the work that's being done on our end. So again, just I'll go over a couple things. Um, one, the big picture. I'm a fan of the big, bold pictures. I think that's nice for our families. I think the kids like it. So I wanted that to be at the centerpiece. And up here on the top right-hand side where it says Indian or left-hand side where it says Indiana Area School District, you can always click on that and go back to the home page. Similar to what you could do on the current page. You'll see our buttons here on the right uh, are pretty much the same, minus uh, the one for school board where I'll show you that will go. Then you also notice up top where it has athletic safety plan, ideal plus HR, those things all stay the same. What I'm going to do is once the board takes action at July 12th or sooner on the health and safety plan, I'll make sure that goes this COVID-19 link goes right to that. So it's easy accessible um, by all. But again, big, bold, beautiful pictures. Uh, I like it. I think it stands out. Randy, if you don't mind scrolling down to the four squares, then what we did was we looked at some of our, our computer usage and the hits that our websites have taken over the last couple of years as far as what sites are most frequently. And we wanted to make it user friendly. And what we found was one of the big ones was school. So when you click on this, it'll go to schools link. Obviously, it doesn't do it now because it's, again, st static link. Then what we did was we tried to take all those different links for faculty and made a button called faculty resources. So that page is spe specifically dedicated to uh, faculty. And then we have uh, a button for school board, which instead of being on top, it'll just now go right here and have the same layout and feel to it. And then another thing that we looked at based on our data usage was everyone went to power school. That was a big use, uh, big button for families. So we thought just put it right there for everyone to, um, to be able to use and access. So those are the big buttons. That's the big landing page. And then I'll go through the rest and then entertain any questions you have. Ms. Cinda, you have, I saw your hands up. Do you want me to address your question now or go through the rest? Uh, you're muted. Take your time. Take okay. your time. All right. So we'll scroll down. Um, what we have there is our motto, um, where every where everyone is inspired and challenged to excel. Hopefully, you appreciate the big watermark in the background, with the eye with the feather. And then there's going to be a, a message from me, not in Latin, um, but I'll write it from me. And I'm going to figure how this this is going to be used. I don't know if it's going to be static or it's something I can change all the time. I want to differentiate and play with that, but I think it's important to have a welcome message. Uh, from us uh, to, to our families about the district because there's a lot of great things going on in the district district and I think I need to do a better job of celebrating that because uh, if you look at the last three years what this board's done uh, collectively it's been pretty impressive and I'd like to kind of call that out and update it now with that said uh, maybe I can update it when we have other issues like for example I think parents got tired of all my emails about COVID but they appreciate it because at least they're being aware maybe that's another facet I can use so this is kind of new I can always take this down if I don't want to use it. So at this point, though, I, I think I have two options. One with the idea of keeping it. So the first option would be either keep it static or second option, update it as I see fit. And I, and I want to mess with that. And, and it will look, we'll look at that as we go. But I think it's important because I think, you know, the one thing that I got pretty clear when I got hired was our families want to be communicated with and informed with. This is just another avenue to do that. And I'll, I'll worry about that in a minute. But nonetheless, it won't be in Latin. So I can take care of that. Um, if we could scroll down. Randy. Then what you'll see um, here is the news section. So on our current website, it goes vertically, right? Latest news and then calendar, both vertically. You see a switch now to where it's horizontally. Uh, all the news sections will be here and there'll be a button that you can't not see right now, but it'll say click here to show all news. So the news will be archived. You can click on all of it, but we're only going to limit the three stories at a time because if you go more than three stories at a time on this main landing page, it gets too busy and your attention gets taken away to other things. So there will be the feature like on the current site uh, to see all news or share all news or whatnot. And again, the beauty of this is once I put it on here, I, I control the news sections for our main landing page. Once I put it here with a matter of click of buttons, it also goes to our social media sites, which also I think is beneficial for those families who may follow the social media as well. So that's the latest news and scroll down. Oh, there, there's the show all news button, good. Then again, rather being vertically, uh, you'll see horizontally the upcoming events. So again, there will be three at a time, so it doesn't take up the busyness of the page and make it too busy. But clicking on show all events will give you a, that nice view that you see now by clicking on show all events. I think it allows us to streamline it. It allows people to pay attention to the moment, but also allows them, gives them access to either forward ahead, go backwards, or click on show all events 
to see uh, a bevy of all the events that have taken place. And on there, for example, like our board meetings, on there you'll be able to see past agendas uh, as well as the links to past meetings. Uh, you won't see the recordings per se because we do Google Meet, you'd see the, the Google Meet link. But we think it's a nice way to streamline it, make it look sharp, make it look nice. Uh, but again, biggest difference here, instead of being vertically like they are now, they're more so horizontally, which I'm, I'm okay with. And I think they look nice. You may get upset that people have to click on show all events to find, you know, more additional events. But right now we only have five listed. I think three is the appropriate number. So I guess my point is most people have to do that regardless if they want to see additional events. So we're trying to get better at, at streamlining the website as well as being comprehensive. And uh, if anyone has any ideas for improvement, we could talk about that. Scroll down. Randy, the newest feature I added it was a State Connect feature. Um, I think, um, what will happen here is our our, our most uh, recent YouTube sites will go, our YouTube uh, videos will go here, and then our most recent tweets that we post. I could do tweets, uh, Twitter and Facebook, but I thought that was redundant because whatever I put on Twitter, I most likely put on Facebook. Right? There's very rare exceptions, so I thought, well, I don't, you don't need to see the same thing twice. So I, I embedded Twitter, and then our from here would be our most recent um, YouTube video. Now, this is important to, 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 to clarify, distinguish, and delineate. It would be the district's YouTube channel. It would not be like the high school's page or junior high's page. It would only be the ones that I put up, post on the district, which in this most cases are messages from me or board meetings. Now, we can always evolve that and grow it as we see fit, but right now I thought it was better just for the district videos to be on there. There's nothing that precludes us from taking stuff from the uh, individual school page and put on a district one that helps streamline it. But I wouldn't, I didn't want six or seven different channels shown anyway. So that's why I did the district one. Uh, again, I'll change the background uh, picture when I get, when I get a chance, but I think it streamlines. I think it looks nice and I think it helps eliminate somewhat of a step, right? Cause you always could ac access these sites from our website. Anyways, it's just a little bit more broader and more noticeable. And Randy, if you could scroll down, the only other thing I did differently, again, you can still access our Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube by these buttons at the bottom right. But I also now, I want to start including some of the uh, accomplishments we get and badging when we get them. If you see now on the current page, the the blue ribbon icon and the best schools icon, they're kind of awkwardly placed in the beginner. This will allow us to keep it down here below and keep reminding, us of, reminding ourselves of some of the accomplishments that the district has made. Not saying we can't get better, but it do, does allow us to uh, continue, you know, to brand ourselves. And there's a lot of great things going on. We should celebrate that. And then the last feature at the bottom, what's nice is you also have the select the language. As we know, we have a lot of students and families from um, overseas through IUP and our partnership there. They can hopefully change this to the language that suits their needs. And that's through Google Translate. So uh, that's pretty much a, a nutshell. I think it's pretty accessible. I, I like it. I think it has a nice flow to it. It keeps the integrity of what we built before just in a more streamlined, modern um, modern look. So with that said, Ms. Sidney, I know your hand was up. I'll, I'll take your um, feedback first. My very favorite thing on the front page of our website now is the YouTube button that I don't have to scroll through anything. Is there a possibility of getting it put back up there? Yes, ma'am. Are you okay with it being on the bottom? I have it on the bottom now instead of the top. Does that matter to you? But it's on the main page. So everything that you just showed us is the main page. Yeah, like Randy, can you go back to the template? So I've I've got it up. And so this what he's showing right now is the very bottom of the main page that will pop up when I go to www.iasd.cc. This is the main landing page. Yes, ma'am. And then what you could do, you have two options. You can click on the video right here. Uh or you can't see my cursor. Randy, yeah, no. we're Randy's yeah, I cursor. Can, I can see it. Yeah. Yep. All right, Randy, no. scroll, and scroll down, Randy, real quick. You can either access it through there, or Miss Cinda, you can click the YouTube button on the bottom right hand side there. Okay, because I I don't know that. That was the reason I asked the question when the first when the very first presentation screen came up, because I I load the school district's website and I don't even have to look anymore. I just click on YouTube. And yeah, all I did, Miss Cinda. Took it from the top and put it at the bottom. If you're okay with it, it just made it less busy. But I can add, I can easily put them up top too. I just think it's going to be less, uh, not as easy for people to find, and they're going to be impatient and not scroll down to the bottom and look for it, unless they're told specifically, like I just was. Now I can do that, but it, I don't think it makes it 
it's it's enough of a change that I think it could cause a problem. What I'll how about this, Miss? And that when I release the website, I'll put in writing and explain it at the bottom. But we see frustration occur, then I can easily add it to the top. Would you be okay with that as a compromise? Yeah. Okay, I could do that. Uh, Chauncey, I think your hands up, sir. Yeah, it's nice to hear about change. It's just when I finally got used to it. <laughs> We, we like to keep you on your toes, Mr. Ross. <laughs> but seriously, I, I wish I could get my web, website as fresh as this. I, I, I wish you well. I'm eager to see how it, uh, how it turns out. Good luck, Mike. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it, sir. Ms. Barker? Okay, I had some questions. Um, well, so my first comment is the one, the one thing that I always go to on the district's webpage is the lunch menu. Is that still an easy, accessible um is it on the individual pages yes it, both um what we'll do is we'll make a main landing page for food services like we do on our current site and then each school randy if you could stop right there each school these four squares each school got to personalize them and some of the schools have made it lunch menus so not only will it be available on the main district on a drop down under students and parents or food services it'll also most likely be available as one of these four icons so yes it'll be available all right um and then, are they, is, is the company in the three doing this? Or are they doing any user user testing on your new layout? Or is it just kind of a, a pick, pick? Yes. Of nope. They, they do their own internal measures and tests. And it's also, additionally, that includes accessibility, right? Because we know there's people with um, uh, difficulty seeing the screen. So they go through their own measures and make sure it's accessible. I don't do that. I really draft the content um, and build that all out. They are responsible for the those user uh, features and accessibilities. Will you still have the pop-ups, the like, um, you know, we have a COVID case, you know, pop-ups as we did this year? Yes, ma'am, I control all that. I, yep, I connect that to our social media. Yes, ma'am, I'll, I'll still have that, that feature as well. That will not change. They are growing um, their other services, for example, we use Bright Arrow to communicate, send text messages, email. They have a feature through here, but the, right now the feature is too expensive. So <clears throat> even though it's another tool we have to use, I made the decision to stay with Bright Arrow because until that price comes down, um, I don't really want to go that route because their price with the websites is just brilliant. Uh, it, it's, it, it's very fair. I don't know why they're they're a little outpricing themselves on the other side, but we'll have to work that out. Ms. Cinda? Or I'm sorry, Ms. Barker, do you have any other questions before I go to oh, Cinda? I just have two quick ones. So is it still um – the principal's responsibilities for the individual pages, or has that uh, workload been delegated elsewhere? That's up to them to decide. Ultimately, it's the principal's responsibility. If they have someone who wants to help them build that and work on that, they have the right to do that. Uh, but ultimately, they're responsible, held accountable to make sure their websites are updated, just like I do the main website. Okay, I just want to say it looks really nice. Uh, you know, I, I like, um, I actually like the longer front page because when you're somewhere and you have poor reception, you load that front page and you might not be able to really click further, you know, less clicks is better in my opinion. So I actually really like this. It looks nice. Thank you, Ms. Parker. Thank you. Ms. Sinda? So have they changed the, um, the way that, for instance, the health and safety plan, when it was on the, the, the website we have now, when you clicked on it, it was so small that not even a young person could see it. And you know my thing about having things big enough to see. Have they changed it so that you can upload a PDF file so that we can see it instead yes. of having that little teeny tiny? Yep, I can okay. make that. That's exactly what I'm going to. I'm torn. Like I'm not going to fancy the new health and safety plan up. It's either going to be a Google Doc or a PDF. But yes, you'll have that availability to you make it either or, and they can zoom in as they see fit. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'm, I'm not specifically asking for the health and safety plan to be there, but that was a, a very difficult thing. If we want people to see things and, you know, stay in touch with us, then we need to make it so it can be seen and make it so that it can be posted in a way that's easy and quick for you yep. instead of having to contact the company and have them do it. Yep. So, yeah, okay. I agree. Thank you. I agree. Yes, ma'am. Chauncey, I think your hand's up again, sir. No, not intentionally. I'm sorry. Okay, that's okay. Miss Leeper? Yeah, I think it looks great also. I have a couple questions, and Barb hit one of them, like the lunch menu. That was what um, I often frequented. 
And um, will there be links to the board meetings from the calendar? That's actually how I usually get to the board meeting. So I go to the calendar and then click attend. Is that is that still going to happen? Yes, ma'am. I'll continue that. Um, you, this is a decision the board's got to make down the road, and I'm not saying now, Ms. Leeper, but the decision the board's got to make is how long do we will continue doing hybrid? Um, I think right now that what I understand, the board said, look, committee meetings are going to be virtual. On the nights we have board meetings, they're going to be hybrid. So I would keep it as that unless you said to me, hey, we're going 100% back in person then I'd probably go back to just the streaming on YouTube, not the um, Google Meets. But right now, it was yes, those will all be on there as you're used to until you tell me otherwise. Okay, and then the other thing that I often see parents um, asking for help with on Facebook in the mornings is what day is today? Because obviously, you know, the elementary, the three to five buildings are on a different rotation than the four to five buildings. Um, so, can we, when the principals are making their pages, can there be a very easy link to the days? It is nothing more frustrating to know whether to put your kid in tennis shoes or let them wear the flip flops that they want to wear. So I think that that's something that we can really do to help our parents. Like, don't search for it. It should be right there. What day is it? Um, and any special day, like crazy hat day or whatever, I think that's really important to help parents out. But yep. other than that, that's, those are my only comments. It looks great. Yes, ma'am. We, we have two options. We can either put it in the calendar. Randy, scroll down um, to the uh, calendar section. Right, We could put it right here, Miss Leeper. Like it could say, in the, not the main site, but on each school site, it could say A day, B day. I believe Aaron does that now, or some, some of the schools do. I don't want to speak. Some of the schools already do that. And or, Randy, go up to the top what each school could do on their page under student parents, maybe they could put a calendar there as well. That gives them the whole month maybe that they can look at via Google. So we could do probably both. I'll work with the principals on that, but that's, yeah, it's not insurmountable. Maybe we'll do both, but let us play with that. But I think, Aaron, don't you do that now? Or is that Kelly? I don't want him to speak. I know someone does it on her website last time. I, I do do that. It's on the side on the calendar. It says day one, day two, day three. And I think some of the other schools do it as well, not just me. Yeah, I think a couple do. So we could do both, Ms. Leeper. That way you can get the big view, but also maybe the three-day glance or five-day glance as well. Is that okay? I think that sounds great. Okay. Um, I expect this, Ms. Barker, to be up. Uh, I think I, I sent them. We sent the principals and I met last week. They did a good job getting all their links in. I would probably expect by the end of the month to have this up, so in August. And I'll be sure to communicate with families via Bright Arrow when it comes time, but that's when we'll have up. Miss Blank has her hand up and then Miss Cinda. Miss Blank, wanna go first? Um, yeah, um, I had mentioned this at the dinner and I don't expect you to be able to add it into the website or anything right now, but I'd like it to have a spot where somebody could order like Indiana Area School District bumper stickers or t-shirts, something to show more school spirit to put in their yard or whatever because right now parents don't have a place to go get that so i, I agree 100 percent um we have a store at the high school and junior high i want to see where they're at and if not i'd like to partner with a local agency like fast times they'll do um they'll do electronic stores where you can go in and buy stuff and what's nice about that in my opinion is blank is i don't have to buy any overhead meaning i don't have to buy four dozens of sweatshirts I, they could just get them as they need so yes we're going to get there um I'd probably say by September, Ms. Blank, if you're okay with that, or late August, I'll have it done. But just give us a little time because I do want to give the high school and junior high time to see about their school stores and see if they have any interest. If not, then I'd like to go outside, maybe like a Fast Times or something like that who does that. No, I love that. I think that's great. Um, another thing you might want to consider is if you uh, talk to Artist Hand or whatever, um, if, you, if there's some artists that want to make school stuff for um, – for them to sell, they could donate like half of what they make to the school for us to sell for our profit. You know what I mean? In return for our okay saying, yeah, go ahead, you know, enjoy it. Yep, I could, I could definitely look at it. There's one nice feature on this uh, website that I don't use very often. Um, there's a gallery, right? You could put different galleries and photos from different events. I don't use it that often because I don't go out and take the pictures, uh, but that's something we can also increase. So even like when we have a, an event at the artist hand, we could take a picture of the different artwork and have our own virtual gallery here that we can think of too. So yeah, there's some 
I need to get a little bit better. I, I mean, I like to maintain the content and the website, but I, I, I can grow and, and develop that a little bit more too and get some more pictures in. But yeah, no, no, no that's outside the scope. We had some processes to go through, but we'll, I'll bring it forward to board when we're there. Ms. Uh, Ms. Bro. So since this is just a revamping of the Edleo website that we have now, Will everything that's on the current website be transferred over? So I'm not going to have to ask for copies of minutes or agendas. They'll still be there. Yes, ma'am. Okay. That was an issue when we changed from the other uh, website. And it's still an issue because I can't go back and, and look at the past only to a certain point. So, yep. okay. Thank Anything you. that's on our website now will be transferred over to other one. Excellent. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Parker, I'll defer to you. I don't know if there's any more questions or comments. Um, I, I had a quick question if Kevin doesn't mind, Mr. Evan, Edmondson doesn't mind answering. Um, I think he's on the call. He is, yes ma'am. Uh, do, does the junior high or senior high ever invite parents into the school store? Do we ever have like a parent night? No, that's a great question, Ms. Parker. I, I know with the past year we've had and limiting the number of visitors in the building. It did not happen this year. Honestly, I don't want to misspeak, be my only, going to my second year, I'm not sure in the past what has been done, but we can certainly uh, look with, with APTT coming up and get, having some, hopefully we can have some more face-to-face -face, um, um, uh, gathering points throughout the year with families, whether if we get back to, if we get to the point where we have parents in the auditorium, um, coming to watch mu live musicals or live shows. We can certainly, Dr. Mimic and I have spoken about having that store, school store open when we have visitors come in. Absolutely. We've had parents come in this year, uh, you know, on base-by-base -base meetings, ba on base-by-base -base situations, we've had parents come in um, uh, and meet with uh, Dr. Mimic and myself, and they noticed the school store, and they've made comments how nice that is. So certainly, Dr. Mimic and I have plans in place to better utilize that store and get more community members in there when they want to. Um, and I, I have no problem if a parent contacts me and says, hey, I hear you guys have a school store. We can do that safely, um, even in the times we're at now. We can do it safely based on our safety plan where we can have individual appointments where parents can come in one at a time and view our school store to view that. That's something we can absolutely do, Ms. Parker. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah, um, it's just, it, you know, I know my daughter came home and she said, oh, yeah, we have a school store. And I said, oh, well, what's in it? And then she couldn't really describe anything. Um, but, it, you know, to get school spirit, to get uh, kids to really take pride in their um, uh, school, sometimes they need a little bit of swag. Sometimes uh, they don't. Uh, it just, it depends. But uh, school pride is very important and feeling part of your community and the school district and, and everybody working together is, is extremely important. Um, I don't see any more hands up. I don't see any uh, more questions. And I always have the hope of um, keeping my meeting. You know, if you know anything about my other meetings um, that I do for 4-H and stuff, we always try to keep it to one hour. So I'm excited that we're at one hour. Um, anything else, Mike, for the good of the order? Not at all. That's all I have. Okay, um, hey, Mr. Mr. Vu, can I have one more one more comment, real quick, Miss Parker, if you don't mind? Oh yes, go ahead. One thing we can do too is like to, to kick off the school year, uh, in, in association with PBIS, because our, our kids love utilizing the store for PBIS awards. And just for an idea, uh, if, if the committee thinks it's worth it, we I, we can put it put together a video showcasing our great school store. Uh, you know, with, with our students participating in that. And I'll do two things. That will be a great way to kick off PBIS, get students excited about earning those awards again, but also showing the community, hey, we have this and this is available uh, and we can certainly, you know, work out again, find a way to do it safely by request. If a parent wants to come in and check it out, uh, it can even be after school too, when the kids are not in the building. But if you think that's a good idea, we can certainly look into doing that, Ms. Parker. Yeah, I mean, you could do the game plan. It's um, your your building essentially, but uh, I think it's great. I, I personally enjoy um, the videos, and uh, so um, yeah. So uh, you know, see see as you run it, as long as you know, of course, the big boss approves. Um, it 
it's really nice to take pride in in, in our school district. Uh, okay, any Thank other you. any other uh, comments or, or questions? Yes, Mr. Ross. Bob, just want to, uh, Barbara, I just want to chat with you offline when the meeting is fun, when the meeting is done. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you all for attending and uh, we'll see some of you tonight or maybe all of you tonight. So take care. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Talk to you later.